For some reason, when we are learning technical things, I feel like we all think we should know everything. And this is something I see a lot in people leaving comments. They're looking for roadmaps. They're looking for a list of all the things that they need to know, what tools, what skills. At some level, that's helpful. You wanna get a lay of the land. I started to think about it compared to learning, let's say a spoken language. Let's say I wanna learn French or German or something that I don't know how to speak today. My goal wouldn't be to memorize every single word in the dictionary. Instead, my goal with that is to be fluent, to be a fluent speaker of the language. I want to be able to go to that country or go to somebody who can speak that language and be able to navigate the conversation. And even if you don't know everything, it's okay because you know enough to be effective. And that's something that I encourage you to think about as you're learning the technical skills of data engineering. To me, the goal isn't to learn every single tool and every single language. The goal is to be fluent in data engineering. So obviously that sounds great. Of course, it's okay. How do I apply this? So I'll give you some examples in my journey that has helped me what I believe take this approach. And again, as I reflect, I think this is what I did and what I continue to do. So number one is the best thing you can do is come up with a fun project for yourself, something that's going to be fun to learn about. Again, think about if you're learning a language, you want to talk about things that are interesting. I don't know, just it's not boring. You want to describe a situation that is that you might be interested in describing. So again, with data, for me, I I've always been interested in sports. So one of the first things I did was I consolidated, I tried to figure out how to gather data on sports. And before even gathering data, what I did was I created a database and I manually inserted data on sports and different leagues in the city. And then I did some more stuff with it. Another thing I did was I, I like music. So I would create different database tables, literally manually inserting and creating and updating and just going through the foundational process of creating tables for inserting artist names, their record labels, where they're from, who they're affiliated with and having IDs and names and relationships. And just we're talking like 10 records in each table, but it doesn't really matter because you're learning the foundations in that example. And then at that point, once I got that situated, I started to learn how to speak the basic language of database objects. I started to look at, all right, how can I bring more data in? So I would try to figure out how to connect to things externally and bring it in. And then how do I automate it? And you'd slowly build on your understanding until you get something a little bit more robust. And really, that's what every company's doing. They're starting from scratch and they're slowly building. But a lot of times what happens is we get dumped right in the middle of something that's already built out. People who have been there for a while, and we feel completely inadequate because these people seem to know so much more than us because we miss that whole first part of the building. And really what I want to explain to you is you can do this on your own and you can form your own examples and, and become fluent in your own way and then go back to work. So building on that, the next step is really establishing your own playground stack. I talk about this in other places, but I think building your own playground data stack is something that's extremely helpful and it's really like an asset for your career. So you take, let's say that very simple example that I said before, but you add other components and slowly you build your own end-to-end -end data stack. And I think a lot of people get scared away from this because they think, oh, it's gonna cost so much money, I can't afford this. But first of all, there's a lot of open source options that you can build off of and just basically use without licenses and with for free. But even if you do sign up for some cloud accounts, there's free trials. And also if you're not running things all the time, it's really not expensive. It's not gonna cost you a lot. So you can practice and you can, again, become fluent in navigating these things. And really you just need to build on those foundations. So you just need the way to, how do you get data in? Where are you storing your data? How's it getting there? How are you transforming it? How are you visualizing it? How are you gonna automate it? You know, these are the same questions that a company is gonna ask and that you're gonna have to do. And approaching it from that perspective is different, I believe, than trying to say, I need to know everything about SQL. I need to know everything about Python. I need to know how to use every single tool. It's just, you're overwhelming yourself and you're not really achieving the outcome that you want, which is how do you go into a team and, and be effective? Now, of course, there's gonna be seasons where you need to go deep. Now, I'm not neglecting that. There will be seasons when you need to go deep on a specific tool. You know, when I was trying to learn SQL, I was trying to understand query engines and plans and indexes and all sorts of stuff. But once you get a feel for some of them, you're going to be able to apply it to other ones. Maybe you're going into an interview and you need to describe something and you can say, hey, I never use this, but here's what I do understand about this concept. And here's what I would learn and how I would approach it. And a lot of times, if you know enough about it and you have the right mentality, you can get through that. 
but I think this is something that holds a lot of us back. Hey, real quick, I just wanna hop in and say that if you're enjoying this video and you want some more content from me that's like this, I'll leave a link in the description and the first comment below that you can come get some more information, get some more content, and hopefully it'll continue to help you on your journey with data engineering for yourself, for your team, whatever it is you're trying to do. So again, there'll be some links down below, but with that said, let's get back to the video. So the third thing here is once you've practiced with some fun projects, you've created your own little playground stack, you can then, if you have a job at that point, go back to work with this new perspective and start trying things or recommending things at work and applying your knowledge there as well. And now you're getting real experience. And so you're getting paid to continue learning. That's the perspective I have. A lot of this has to do with how you approach things and your perspective. I mean, you can look at work and say, this is a, a pain, which it probably will be a lot of times, but it's also an opportunity to keep learning. And it's an opportunity to get paid to do some pretty cool stuff. And if you have something that you wanna do later in life or after this job, this is an opportunity to get paid and to learn things. And, and it's not the end all be all. For example, I knew I wanted to start a business at some point. I didn't know what it was, but I figured data and technology was gonna be my way to do it. It vibed well with my personality. I'm not gonna be an outward, it's funny because I do YouTube now, but I'm not gonna be that sales focused person to run a business. For me, I like being a little bit more behind the scenes. So that jived well with me, but I felt that learning on the job was an amazing way to practice and get me prepared for when that moment came, which again was years later. And I think having that goal puts all of these things in perspective. So learning, practicing, applying it on the job, and then you take it and continue to do whatever you want. This is kind of a rambling video. This is something I actually haven't done on this channel before, but I hope you found this helpful. Again, I think approaching things with the perspective of trying to be fluent. Your goal is to be fluent in data, to be able to navigate things and talk without feeling like you have to know everything. Because here's the thing, nobody knows everything. There's nobody out there, despite how confident and great they might be at something specific at work, nobody's gonna know every tool or every skill. So. Uh, don't sell yourself short and just continue to learn and I think you'll be great. So anyway, hope you found all this helpful. Thanks as always for watching and I will see you at the next video.